Why, hello there! Happy New Year, welcome back. This is part 17 of my build log of the Trumpeter 1-200 scale model of the Titanic. In today's episode I'm going to cover a few things. I've been working on painting some figures, so I'll be showing those in a little bit. I've also added some more scale decks to the Foxhall deck, Poop deck and the other well deck, which I haven't already completed. And I have also been working with some of the decals for the ship. I had actually planned on doing the New Year's sailing to test a few of the little things that I'd added to the boat over the last couple of months, but as you can see in true Titanic fashion, it was a little bit icy, uh, so that idea sadly died a death. Anyway, so without any further ado, I will crack on. So in this clip I am painting the faces and hands onto some of the Titanic's officers. Uh, predominantly I'm using XF15 from Tamiya. Uh, this paint's called Flat Flesh. It's actually the same colour I'm using on the funnels, but it seems to work pretty well. Um, I've got to say, with this sort of fine detail brush painting, sometimes I will sit down, get everything ready, start painting, and within 30 seconds I'll just know I'm not in the right frame of mind, you know? I'll make a mistake and it'll make me a bit irritated, and then I'll make another mistake and I'll get even more irritated. Um, and when that happens I find it's just a case you just need to put your brush down and go and do something else. Um, other times, you know, I'll, I'll be in the right frame of mind and, you know, I'll sit down and look up at the clock three hours later and I'll have got through loads of figures. So, um, just seems to be potluck when I seem to be in the mood and not. I'm not going to go over the paints that I've used here because, to be honest, I haven't really kept track. Um, over years of building models and stuff, I've just sort of acquired a number of different paints as I've gone, you know. Um, and you can see that on the board I'm using to paint, I've sort of mixed a few things up and made a few different colours, so I don't really think there needs to be a hard and fast policy here. I think it's just a case of, you know, having a look at some sources online, seeing what works, and then judging from there, really. So I thought I'd give a bit more of a close-up view of some of the figures I've been doing. Here is a rack of officers, um, and I've given them... Uh, sort of very deep navy blue jackets, trousers, black shoes uh, and hats with the white topper on the caps. Um, I'm not certain whether Titanic's officers would have worn the white toppers on their caps or not. Um, all that I can find is that the uh, the White Star Line officers um, would have worn the white star would have worn the white toppers at on some occasions, but not others. But I can't really work out wh which occasions would uh, require the white toppers. But I thought really, um, because this is such small scale, I thought the toppers would probably help to highlight the officers um, as their figures, you know. Um, and because these are so small, I thought it's probably worthwhile trying to do as much as possible to make these stand out. Uh, so here's another set. Uh, and I've done about another three or four racks of these. Um, so I won't show you them all because they're broadly the same. The only one that's a bit different is this figure, which um, is meant to be of Captain Smith. Now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't personally bother um, paying for a set just with this in because, again, the, the detail's so small. I mean, you know, that's my index finger. It's so small that you're not really going to pay any. You're not really going to notice it. But I have tried to make this slightly different, so I've given him some gold epaulets. Uh, I've also painted a beard. So I've tried to make him stand out a wee bit. Um, on to the actual uh, passengers. I am going to do some crew, but I'll do those at a later date. On to the passengers. Here's a selection of first class women. Um, and by 1912, uh, women's fashion had been slightly changed by the introduction of things like driving, automobiles and such. Um, so the really sort of floaty dresses were rather gone by this point. Uh, it's also worth pointing out that I'm modelling this boat in a sort of... I'm sort of going for an afternoony kind of look. Um, I did flirt with the idea of doing the evening uh, for, you know, then you could have people in dinner jackets and slightly more expansive dresses, but... The problem is, I sort of think on a transatlantic liner, I don't think you'll get many people out on the decks in the evening because it'll be so cold. Um, so I thought, you know, I'd quite like to have quite a few people on this boat to sort of give it a bit of life. So I thought the ideal time for that would be sort of after lunch, afternoon kind of time. 
So people aren't going to be wearing evening dress, they're going to be wearing day wear. Um, and from all the sources I can find, women were at this sort of period either wearing dresses or matching jackets and skirts. So, you know, for example, this lady here has a matching jacket and skirt. This lady has a matching dress. This lady doesn't, but the colours are, you know, complementary of each other anyway. The only real sort of change or um, different colour that you would see on people's clothing was in the hats, where there was quite a lot of sort of floral designs. So you'd often find a matching hat, but with some floral decoration on it. Uh, and I don't know if you can quite see, but on this red hat here, I put a couple of daubs of, of um, pink and yellow, just to sort of make just to sort of give that indication of floral decoration. And the same on this blue dress here, where I put some yellow flowers. Um, whether this is 100% accurate or not, I'm not sure. But from the sources I have found, this seems to be reasonably accurate. Um, and I've carried that through with the men as well. Um, so again, day wear, not evening wear. So I've gone for a selection of sort of tweedy kind of colours, you know, uh, yellows, browns, sort of lightish kind of blues um, so and typically sort of black shoes um, matching suits that sort of thing and I've got another set of men over here um, <clears throat> now my intention is to split these up into uh, decorations for different classes so you know for example this gentleman in a top hat will be in first class possibly first or second first or second uh, and this gentleman here in his trousers with these braces will probably be in third. Um, I'm probably not going to do too much separation of the women in first or second class because I think at this scale it will be almost impossible to paint a difference in their fashions. So um, first and second class women are going to be broadly the same decoration. I'll just paint double the amount and fit them into their respective decks. Uh, third class women, I am going to paint in a slightly less bright colours, you know, slightly more sort of functional wear, perhaps. Um, and with the men, uh, first and second class men, again, I'm going to keep broadly the same tweed sort of jackets and suits and that sort of thing. Third class men are going to be slightly more functional uh, wear. Imagine sort of Jack Dawson in the actual Titanic film, um, you know, braces, corduroy kind of trousers, that sort of thing. So there we are, that's where I'm at currently with the people. Hello folks, welcome to the shed. Um, it's the first time I've ever shown the shed in these videos, but there we are. Shed, with of course a bit of Titanic flavouring. So, what I'm doing here is I am just wanting to remove this piece of plastic from the poop deck because scale decks because I'm using the detail upset scale decks um, will cover all of this the only piece of extruded plastic that we want to keep are these two pieces here so this needs to go uh, let's see if I can actually do this on camera <laughs> So there we are. Uh, it doesn't look it, but this actually now is quite smooth. A um, little bit of raised plastic there, which I'll just go for. Um, but yeah, so that's that now. Uh, so the next step is to paint this black. And then, there we are. Uh, then we move on to adding the... Actually, no, we don't move on to adding the scale decks. So I'll paint this black first. Then I'm wanting to do the uh, the white and the sort of 
creamy, uh, orangey, browny kind of bottom bit of the of the uh, the, the the well deck um, area. Then I'll add the scale decks. Um, I might also do a little bit of if there's any sort of detaily painting in there. Um, I'll do that as well before adding the scale decks. Basically, I want to make it so that I don't do any painting once the scale decks are on, because once they're on, um, the chance of spilling paint and damaging them becomes all the more likely. So don't really want to do that, if at all possible. So the black paint has dried now, and I've just masked up uh, all the areas which I want to keep black. Um, I'm not sure how easy this is to see in this light, actually. But um, so all of this stuff here, this exposed black stuff is going to become white um, and then I've masked back as far as I think I need to. Uh, this will remain white as well but uh, that should not need to be masked to uh, prevent white getting there. I've also just left a tiny little seam at the top because that is the sort of, um, it's almost like a sort of gunnel rail um, right at the edge of the deck which will have been painted white as well. So I'll spray this and then come back to you. So here's the first coat of white on the poop deck. Um, need another couple of coats before it's good enough, I think. Um, one thing I just wanted to show is, um, because I'm a little bit of an idiot, I tend to highlight the bits of plastic that need to be removed um, before actually removing them, because otherwise um, there's, there's always that little danger that you might accidentally remove a piece of plastic that needs to stay. Um, so I tend to just highlight the ones that need to go in advance just to make sure that I don't make any stupid mistakes. So before I show you any actual airbrushing, I thought I'd just show you the setup that I actually have. Um, first thing, before I go any further, you absolutely must wear a really good quality mask when you're doing airbrushing. Um, I tend to work with enamel paints um, when I'm airbrushing. Uh, and I also use this stuff, cellulose thinners, uh, neither of which are things that you want to breathe in. Uh, they're really, I mean, you don't want to breathe in any paint, obviously, but these uh, enamel paint particularly is really not nice. You don't want to be breathing that stuff in. So please wear a really good quality mask. I use a mask with proper uh, replaceable filters. It's an FFP3 mask. Um, but honestly, it's just it's just not worth not doing so. Um, so that's the first thing. Um, here's the setup I've got though. Um, this is a really 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 cheapy airbrush uh, and a really really cheapy compressor. Um, I got these both as a set uh, ooh, eight or nine years ago now, a long time back. Um, I think it cost about 25 quid. It was ridiculously cheap. And you know, it's probably not the best quality in the world, but it's lasted me perfectly fine. Um, there'll be things that do the job better, but this one does perfectly well for me. Um, the airbrush has two actions. It's got a, uh, you depress the lever for greater or lesser pressure and pull back on the lever for more or less paint. Uh, when I'm filling up the airbrush, I tend to use these and these are like little mini pipettes. Uh, got, I got about 150 of them off Amazon for about three quid, I think. Um, and, you know, I use those to take in some of the cellulose thinners uh, and some of the enamel paint. Um, paint is, tends to be too thick to go through an airbrush, which is why you need the thinners, uh, just to thin it out in advance. Um, and the pipettes are useful things to sort of... Uh, it makes what could be a fairly messy job quite a lot less messy. Um, and that's about it, really. Um, for me, at least, there are better techniques, but for me, after once I've got everything mixed up in the cup, uh, it's a matter of just pointing and spraying, really. So that's it. Uh, please, though, please wear a mask. So here I am painting the forecastle deck. Uh, I'm doing the white stuff here. So the Ford hatch cover, anchor storage area, and also the wall, uh, which joins the forecastle deck to the well deck.
So I slightly arsed up the first bit of spray painting because I'd forgotten that the back side of the forward hatch cover needs to remain white, so I had to remask and respray that area. So the next little bit was to do the sort of browny, woody, orangey kind of colour uh, for the lower half of the well deck walls. Um, so the first thing I did was to mask up. I did record me masking these things, um, but I'm, I'm not going to subject you to that because it took about half an hour <laughs> and no one's got that much time. So um, just, it's, you know, it's one of those things worth taking your time on. So you can see here, me having been a little bit lazy with my masking, um, I managed to get a bit of overspray into portholes, uh, which ain't great. Uh, obviously, you know, that's gonna affect the color of the light coming out of them. Not to worry though, little cotton bud with some terps on. And there we are, clean as a whistle. And I'll do the same. With the one next to it. Sorry, it's a really shaky camera. I managed to lose the tripod I use, um, <laughs> so I'm holding with one hand and bottling with the other, which is uh, an interesting way of doing things. And there we are, same again. Nice and clean again. Happy days! So I don't really want to show too much of the masking process because it's if I'm honest, it's pretty tawdry and not that exciting, but I am going to show a little bit. So at the moment, I'm wanting to paint this upper portion white, um, having done the sort of reddish colory thing. I don't know what color it is really, but the, the bit below it. So I tend to use the expensive tape. That's this stuff. This is Tamiya. Uh, and I tend to use that for the actual lines that I'm doing. And before I apply it, I usually like detack it a little bit so it's not quite as sticky. And then pop it on. Like so. Oh boy. And then yeah, the Tamiya sort of the Tamiya tape defines where um, the actual line is. And then for the rest of the stuff, I use cheaply masking tape, which I admit has been in the shed for quite a while, so it's a little bit shriveled. Um, and I use this for like the, uh, just the bits that I don't really want to get particularly, like I, I want to avoid paint getting on them, but like I'm not overly concerned either. So, uh, you know, just do a bit of coverage up to there. Sorry if you can't see. And I guess does have a habit of getting in the way of the camera at points like this. I'll probably do another little bit beneath there as well. I mean, for this section, I am quite literally only doing up to here because that's the only bit that's going to actually be visible. I am also going to carry this on around because um, I would quite like to get this top um, gunnel in white as well. So I'm going to carry this around and we'll go from there. So now that I've finished the painting for the Folksall and Poop Deck sections, uh, I'm going to apply the Scale Decks.
So just doing a dry fit to make sure that this deck actually works properly. There's only two bits it actually needs to locate on. We've got the um, forward hatch cover and the sort of rampy thing at the front of it. And then also the uh, skylight over here. And of course it needs to look good around the bow. So it all looks hunky-dory to me. It's certainly, it's fitted on pretty easily now. So next step is to glue underneath and then whack the deck on permanently. So here we are, Foxhall and poop decks or scale decked up. Um, so I need to apply some pressure, permanent pressure, while the glue dries. So I'll get some clamping on in just a sec. Um, but these look really good now, don't they? Really happy with them. So I'm just about to start doing the deckling. Uh, deckling? Is that a word? Is that a real word? I don't know. Anyway, uh, um, it's, a, it's a significant moment really, because uh, I'm going to be adding the ship's name, uh, which obviously, I don't know, kind of feels like a big thing to do. So uh, I'm just, just wetting the... Uh, decal at the minute. I tend to use warm water for this. Uh, now you've got to be a bit careful because um, there are two decals, one for the port, one for the starboard side, and they are almost identical, but they're not quite identical because the uh, there's a slight italicing, a slight slant to the letters. Uh, so you've got to be Got to be a little bit careful that you get the uh, the right one on the right side. Um, it's probably one of those things that 
very few people are actually going to notice, but as with everything, it probably will irritate you if you get it wrong. So, I don't know if that was obvious there, but I put some liquid on the um, on the actual uh, side of the ship first. Uh, and that means that it, it just makes it that bit easier to actually move the ship around. Uh, sorry, makes it that bit easier to move the deck all around once it's in place. So that name goes directly between these two uh, I don't actually think they are portals, they're something else. Um, but go directly between there. I'm just trying to make absolutely sure, 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 that uh, it's level. Pretty happy with that. She's on. So, let that dry. Just show you. There she blows. It's one of the things I quite like about the Titanic, is I feel like it's... Titanic and Olympic, uh, and Britannic, and indeed all the White Star ships, I like how their names are somewhat understated on the ship. They're not sort of, you know, massive letters, 50 feet high. Just really nice, subtle, clean, crisp name, Titanic. Decal numero dos, which is the other side of the ship. And just chopping it out, and then I'll pop it in the water. In the meantime, while that's dry, uh, while that's wetting, sorry, I'll just wet where the decal is actually going to go. That just buys me a bit of time. So once again, just using my clean, trusty paintbrush. Let's get the decal into the right position. That's probably a boat right. And once we've done that, I'm going to use a cotton bud, a damp cotton bud, I should add. just over the surface, as I showed you there. Just to press out any water from underneath the decal, and then with the other side of the cotton bud, the dry side, rub over it. And there you are, nice and easy. I tell you what, that went a lot smoother than I had expected it to. <laughs> and here's the stone ones as well. Um, didn't film this because they were a bit awkward, difficult to sort of get your hands in to actually do these ones. Um, so I didn't film them, but same principle as before. Um, at the minute, the decals are quite glossy. You'll notice that the sort of the black space in between the lettering is quite obviously a different colour to the actual hull black. Um, so what I'm going to do in a future video is I'll do a coat of matte varnish on that, and that should sort of clear those up quite nicely, make the decals look like they're actually painted onto the ship. So that's all I'm going to cover in today's episode. Uh, like I say, Happy New Year. I hope 2021 proves to be a better year than 2020. Um, and yeah, I think made some pretty good progress on this one. I um, feel like now the scale decks are down, that sort of opens up quite a lot of opportunity to do a lot more of the actual modelling. You know, I can now start doing things like the deck fixings and the cranes and all that sort of stuff that I didn't really see any virtue in doing before. So I'm happy with the progress there. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get a video up fairly soon. Um, I'm on holiday at the minute so I've got a bit more a bit more time on my hands. Um, thank you to everyone who subscribed. Uh, over the Christmas period I managed to hit a thousand subscribers which is mad. Uh, so thank you very much everyone for that. Um, one thing to add, you might have noticed some adverts have come up on the videos. That's because when you get to a thousand subscribers um, you're able to monetize the channel. Uh, bear with me on this. I'm sort of getting to grips with how it all works. So if 
if there's too many adverts or whatever, let me know in the comments um, and I'll try to reduce them. But for the time being, I'm sort of, you know, learning how to set this sort of stuff up. So just, you know, bear with me um, and hopefully in a bit of time we'll be able to come up with something that, you know, is hopefully um, favourable for everyone. So um, that's it for today. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments, whack them down below and I will hopefully try to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, give me a like and subscribe if you've enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.